All right, well, thank you first and foremost. I mean, it's Easter. You guys could be doing anything. You could be feasting. You could be doing something else. But you're here to get your fitness on, and you're here even earlier so I could teach you some, some cool things, some information that's going to be unlike anything that you've come across before. I, I don't just say that. Like this, The information I'm going to share is going to challenge your current way of thinking when it comes to health. And I want you to just have the faith in the information to try it out, do some research, and see what works for you. Because the only thing that matters is what the results you're getting at the end of the day. So we're going to dedicate today's uh, lecture. It's going to be like a 30-minute lecture, and I'll answer some questions for you. We're going to dedicate it to Steven, who's a gentleman, soccer player who was here a couple weeks ago, and he suffered a heart attack. And uh, rest in peace, Steven. And we're dedicating this talk to him because we want to make sure that it doesn't happen to anybody here or anybody in your community. So my goal with this to be here, Elio had asked me to come here and speak to you guys about heart disease, about cholesterol, about keto, about fasting, a lot of the things that Elio has implemented and you as well to have helped them transform their health and I've seen it with myself, I've seen it with the people that I help, my community. So I'm gonna share with you just some principles here, some, some golden nuggets with you that I think would be very easy for you to just take and take action with, very practical, that could make a big difference for you. One of my favorite quotes comes from Albert Einstein. And Albert Einstein said, intellectuals, they solve problems, right? So there's a problem and they try to fix it. Geniuses prevent the problem. So my goal here is to walk out of here and all, all of you are a genius. I already know that, but I want you to be a genius with this information. So that's my goal and we're doing this to honor Steven. We're doing this to make sure that nobody has to go through this situation. I saw my dad health deteriorate for several years before he ended up getting a massive stroke which ended, take, ended up taking his life. So I don't want that for anybody. I had to go through that and endure that myself, and it was a very challenging time, and it was preventable, right? We could have been a genius and we could have prevented it. So there's a lot of misconceptions out there when it comes to heart disease, when it comes to cholesterol, and I wanna see uh, a show of hands here. How many of you have heard that cholesterol causes heart, uh, heart disease? Yeah, you've all heard that before, right? Now it's not so black and white. There's a lot of gray area there and I'm gonna kind of break it down for you. Um, I first wanna share a story with you about this, this, this young man who was 35 years old. He had two kids and a wife and it was his birthday. And every year on his birthday, he, it was a, a tradition for him to have a piece of paper and one wish on each paper for every year he turned. So he was 35, he had 35 pieces of paper with a wish on each paper. So one paper said, I wish for a lawnmower, I wish for this car, I wish for whatever he wanted, right? He had 35 wishes. 10 years later, the same gentleman, he was turning 45 years old, and he recently got diagnosed with, the, with cancer. And he was turning 45 years old, it was actually his birthday, his 45th birthday, and on, on the table, instead of having 44, 45 pieces of paper, he had one, and that one wish was just to be healthy. So the healthy person has many wishes. Somebody who does not have their health, they just want one thing, and that is their health back. Our health is our biggest asset, and I'm all for earning money and making an impact and growing your business and scaling up and all that good stuff, but if you don't have your health first, the foundation is broken, the system is broken, because a billionaire who has terrible health will trade their life with somebody who's broke but healthy. Would you agree with that? Mm -hmm. So we are talking about health, we are talking about being a genius here. And I'm gonna be very specific and related to cholesterol. I'm gonna relate it to heart disease because what happened to Steven. So when it comes to cholesterol, when we go to our doctor, the doctor gives you your total cholesterol and something called your LDL. LDL, they always tell you is the bad cholesterol, right? And then you have your HDL, they say it's the good cholesterol and then they give you some other markers. Now, what if I told you that more people die with normal to low cholesterol, more people die with heart disease with normal to low cholesterol than somebody with high cholesterol? That's an accurate fact, by the way. That's, studies show that. More people are dying with normal to low because total cholesterol doesn't mean a damn thing. Absolutely nothing at all. It's much, much more complex than that. And then they're gonna break down the LDL, which is the bad cholesterol, and they're going to say, hey, your LDL is high. We need to do something about it. It's the bad cholesterol. Now, that's also very uh, black and white and not the bigger picture. What the analogy I'm gonna give you is this. In a highway, if we're on I-95 and there's a traffic jam and the car is not moving, 
what's more important to that traffic jam? Is it going to be the number of cars on the road or the number of people inside of the vehicle? It's going to be the number of cars on that road, right? The number of people in the vehicle don't mean a damn thing to a traffic jam. Same thing with your total cholesterol, same thing with your total LDL. They're measuring the total people in your, the total cholesterol in a particle is what they're measuring because cholesterol cannot go through your body freely. It needs to be carried in a particle, a vehicle. So when they give you your total cholesterol or your total LDL, they're measuring the amount of cholesterol within a particle. That doesn't matter. That's like looking at the people inside of a car in a traffic jam. That doesn't tell you anything. We want to know how many particles there are and what are the sizes of those particles. So the first thing I want you to take notes on if you have your cell phone here, ask your doctor for a test called the NMR test. NMR test. What that's going to do is going to tell you how many particles you have and what are the sizes of those particles. That's going to give you a much, much more accurate assessment whether you are at risk for a heart attack, whether you're at risk for a stroke or any any of these problems with heart disease. Now, after you determine that, you ask your doctor for some other markers, which are your in inflammatory markers. Because the most important thing to look at is inflammation. Inflammation, you heard about it before. I mean, if you sprained your ankle, you would have inflammation in your ankle, ankle. But I'm talking about more systemic inflammation, like whole body cellular inflammation. So you ask your doctor for three other tests, which is one is called fibrinogen, which tells you how much inflammation you have. Another one is called high reactive C reactive protein or high sensitivity C reactive protein number two and then homocysteine number three. That's going to tell you how much inflammation you have in your body. Now the goal for everybody is to have healthy amounts of inflammation because inflammation is the cause of heart attacks. Inflammation is the cause of heart disease, of stroke, pretty much every disease, cancer, even weight loss resistance is linked to inflammation. So I'm going to teach you some tools that are gonna bring down inflammation because what happens is when you start removing the interference, the body starts to heal itself. Whatever you got going on, the body starts to heal itself. So when it comes to somebody who gets a disease, somebody who's diagnosed with a disease, they're not born with that. They're not, they don't wake up one day and get di diagnosed with cancer. Cancer, for instance, takes about 10 years to develop, okay? Their bucket ends up full and their bucket overflows and then they are diagnosed with disease or then they get uh, something going on with them that they have to scramble to fix their health. So I want you to look at your body as a bucket. When you're born, that bucket is empty. But then we have all these stressors that we're filling the bucket with. So we're eating carbohydrates all the time. We're not getting enough sleep. We're, we're doing all these things. We have environmental toxins. That bucket ends up getting full. As the bucket gets full, symptoms occur. Maybe we have brain fog can't sleep good and we, we start gaining weight. These are all symptoms. They're not the problem. They are a result of the actual problem. So the bucket ends up getting full and then once that bucket is full, it overflows and that's when real problems start to occur. So our job is to empty out that bucket, to remove all these stressors and the body will start healing itself. Okay? So would you like to learn some tools that I've taught Elio already on how to reduce inflammation, how to teach your body to bring down inflammation. Would you like some of those tools? Okay. One of them is the keto diet. Now the keto diet, have all of you heard of the keto diet before? Yeah. yeah. Keto diet is very popular. It's actually one of the most searched terms on Dr. Google. There is not a cookie cutter approach to keto. There is many different ways that it's being taught. The way that I teach it is as a tool. I teach it so we could teach your body, like I taught Elio's body, to teach us cells how to burn fat for fuel. Because we are we have trillions of cells and our cells can only burn sugar or fat. And our body loves to burn fat. Our cells love fat as its primary fuel source. That's the way that we were designed to be. Because if you look at a cell, it's made up of protein, the cell membrane, protein, fat, uh, fat and cholesterol. So if we could teach our cells to give it the fuel that we want, it's gonna bring down inflammation. It doesn't mean we stay in ketosis. It doesn't mean there's one diet for us all, which there's not. There's not one diet for us all, but it's a tool that you use to teach your body to bring down inflammation because the, the, the ketones that are produced from the body, that brings down inflammation and it burns fat. So you get lean, you have better uh, brain, you have better mental clarity, you have better focus, and you live a long life because it activates longevity genes. So keto is a very powerful tool. There is dirty keto which you've probably seen like on Instagram, people going to McDonald's and just getting the Big Mac without the bun. Yeah, exactly, right? And they're like, hashtag keto. 
And then there's clean keto, which is the way that Elio has done it. Clean keto is eating the right types of fats and combining that with intermittent fasting. So before I even get to intermittent fasting, let's talk about fats. We're talking about the right fats versus, versus the worst fats. I, I posted something on my Facebook yesterday and my Instagram because I was at Publix and I was in line with my girlfriend and I'm looking at the aisle there like right by the checkout counter and they had these buy one get one free deals like they always do but this time everything on there was like a, a recipe for cancer <laughs> everything on there was a recipe for heart attacks honest to God I looked at it and I, I pointed at my girlfriend I'm like this is like the cancer special right here honestly it was Vegetable oils, sugar, vegetable oils, sugar, and vegetable oils. Buy one, get one free. They make it very easy for us, right? So one of the most deadly products that we have is vegetable oil. Corn oil, canola oil, cottonseed oil, soybean oil, and safflower oil. These are the top five that cause heart disease, that cause cancer, that cause massive amounts of inflammation. So if you were to switch out your any vegetable oils you might have in your diet with olive oil, coconut oil, avocado oil, grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, that's gonna be a huge game changer for your health. That's gonna teach your cells to get some of the good fats and remove the inflammatory fats. So that alone right there, if you make that switch alone, you're gonna notice a big difference. Something else is I see a lot of people doing keto, but they're eating, they're eating, um, beef and chicken and pork, but they're eating them from animals that were tortured, animals that were in cages, like these sick animals that you've probably seen in documentaries. The, and they, they give a lot of steroids, they give a lot of medication to these animals, they give them a, a diet that's not natural. So when we're eating grain-fed beef and uh, eggs that are not pastured and just these really bad choices of animal products, what happens is that these animals are pumped full of steroids, they're pumped full of these antibiotics and because they're sick, and they slaughter the animals and we eat them and our body actually absorbs the toxins from that animal. So here's an important thing to understand that when we get toxins in our body from dirty animals, the body is very intelligent. It wants to survive and it does not want those toxins to go to your vital organs. So you know what it does? It activates a pathway called the PPARY pathway. All you need to know is that it creates fat cells for these toxins to go into. So these caged animals are creating toxins that we're eating and duplicating fat cells. So they're making people fat. Because the body is smart, it wants, it's a survival mechanism. It doesn't want these toxins going in the organs, so it's gonna create fat cells because toxins love fat. So it's important to get organic grass-fed beef. We were just talking about the steaks you're gonna be having this week in the morning. Grass-fed steak, pastured eggs, free-range chicken, wild-caught fish. It's important, quality is important. And yet I know it costs more money. I know it's like, two or three hours each time and it adds up very quickly. My stance on that is that you can either pay extra now, pay the farmer now, or pay the doctor later. Now we're being preventative, we're paying extra because we are in control, right? We are being geniuses. Later on, if we don't pay now, we might end up with this, something going on and we have to get medication or God forbid surgery, then we're actually becoming preventative, we're not being preventative, we're being intellectuals but we're trying to solve a problem, right? So you can either pay now or you can pay later. The choice is yours. I would never put a, I would never sacrifice my health for, for anything, not even money. Because the person who's sick would pay, put, put their life savings just to get better, right? So the goal is to be a genius and not ever be in that position. Because I truly believe that we were designed to live 120 years old, disease free, high quality, quality life. I mean, how many of you would like that? To live 120, right? Everybody. Everybody, right? To see your kids, 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 like to see your businesses, plural, whatever you created on this world, make an impact. We were designed to do that, honestly. We were designed to thrive, not to survive. But the things that are going on, I mean, if you look around, if you look around, if you go to a shopping mall, if you go to Disney World, there's so many people that are sick. There's so many people that are obese. And I'm not saying that, by the way, you don't know this about me. I was obese for most of my life until I was 24 years old, until 10 years ago, I was obese. So I struggled with weight issues my whole entire life until I was 24, 10 years ago. The stats are disgusting. 
three out of four Americans Americans are obese or overweight. You see it, right? You see it when you go places. You see people who are unhealthy. 60% of Americans are diabetic or pre-diabetic. 150,000 people are dying every single day. 150,000 people. As I've been here the last 10 minutes or so, hundreds of people have died. So just knowing that puts you in a state of gratitude, which by the way, everything I'm sharing with you will not work unless you have gratitude and love for yourself. Because those are the two of the biggest healers that we have. They reduce inflammation. You have gratitude for everything. The fact that we're just sitting right here in South Florida, you're about to play soccer, you're able to run around, we're breathing. Like there's so many things to be grateful for. If you stay in that, that frequency of gratitude and you love yourself and you love other people, everything that I'm telling you is gonna be that much more effective. The keto, the fasting, whatever you're doing, the working out, all that's gonna be much more effective as opposed to if you're doing all the things right, but you have resentment and you don't have gratitude, you have hate, it's gonna be very impossible to get your life back. It's gonna be very impossible to be healthy, honestly, because you can't heal a body that you hate. So you gotta love yourself, you gotta love other people, especially the ones bothering you, which is the hardest <laughs> thing to do. Because uh, you never know what somebody's going through, right? You just never know. So love and gratitude, two of the biggest healers. Any questions so far? Is it making sense so far? Okay. Now, I was talking about fats. I talked about the good ones. Avocados are awesome fat on the keto diet. Green leafy vegetables are awesome. Fatty shakes, collagen protein. I love collagen protein. Plant-based proteins are great. These are all great things. The keto diet is not necessarily about eating a whole bunch of fat. It's about eating low carb. It's about teaching your body to keep glucose and insulin low so you could go a period of time where you can start burning your body fat. All right, so you go a period of time where you can teach yourselves how to burn fat for fuel. Because every time you spike glucose and insulin when you eat a high carbohydrate rich food, a meal, you're aging yourself faster because it browns the cell. So if you look at an apple, when you bite into an apple and it turns brown, Think of that every time you spike glucose and insulin. So I'm not saying all carbs are bad, I'm just I'm saying we don't wanna do it all the time. We wanna teach our body to keep that glucose and insulin low, okay? So if you combine the keto diet with something like intermittent fasting, have you heard of intermittent fasting before? Yeah, and fasting is not about eating less, it's about eating less often. So that you just go a period of time where you have the same meals or same calories you're already eating just in a certain window Outside of that window, your body is going to start healing itself. So when it comes to heart disease, when it comes to cancer, fasting is one of the most powerful tools you can use to prevent that. Because when you fast, your body will start to heal itself. Because it has all this energy, it has all this resources, and instead of using all those energy and resources for digestion, it's using it to repair itself. That's why there's a, there's a process, that's, there's a switch that's turned on when you start fasting called autophagy. Has anybody heard about autophagy before? It's kind of a, a new word it's in scientific literature, I think maybe like five or six years old. But autophagy is like um, your body's way of cleaning up cellular junk. So if there's a refrigerator right here, let's pretend there's a refrigerator here and I open it up and there's a whole bunch of groceries in it, right? Every grocery has an expiration date. Best used by April 23rd, 2019, best used by whatever date. What will happen if I let all of these groceries expire in the fridge, but instead of grabbing them out of the fridge and throwing them into the trash, I go to the grocery store, buy new groceries, take it back home, push these expired groceries towards the back of the fridge, and then put the new ones in front of the old ones. It's gonna be nasty, it's gonna be disgusting, there's gonna be disease and mold. The human body is like this refrigerator. We have cells, we have protein that have expiration dates. So if we're not taking time, throwing out the groceries, bacteria and disease occur. So when you fast, it's a way for this switch to be turned on and these groceries, your body starts taking out these groceries, it starts using damaged cells and broken cells for fuel. It's very, very intelligent and it's called autophagy. And the definition of autophagy is auto, which is self, and then phagy, which is eating. So it's self eating. I know it sounds kind of weird, your body's eating itself, but it really is. It's eating up the bad cells. So if you can combine keto with fasting, that's a powerful one-two punch. Break down inflammation, prevent disease, teach your body to keep glucose and insulin down, and you live a long, healthy life. 
So that's some of the things that I've taught Elio, and he's got an amazing transformation within what two months, three, three, three months like that. How much weight have you lost so far? I don't know, 40, 50 pounds. 40, 50 pounds. And how's your energy levels? Annoyingly, that's my wife. <laughs> <laughs> so it's annoyingly good. I think you use it as a tool to go in and out of. I call it keto flexing. So I wrote, I wrote a book about it. I'm writing a new book about it. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw the video that I made for you guys, but there's a free resource. Did you see it? So there's a free resource that I'm giving you called the Keto Kickstart Guide. There's a meal plan in there. I have a four pillar structure. I promise you, if you just follow that structure, most of it, 80% of it, you're gonna start getting results. You're gonna start feeling better. It's gonna help your performance out in the field as well. It's gonna help your performance in your training because you're down-regulating inflammation and you're attacking it at a cellular level because that is the root cause of why people are not getting well. If you wanna get well, you gotta fix the cell. We're made up of 50 to 70 trillion cells. That is the root cause. And we need to be our own health detective because if we go to our doctor, like I said, most doctors are gonna look at your total cholesterol, they're gonna look at your total LDL, and it's not giving you the full picture. So it's important for you to request those markers that I told you about to see how much of a risk you're at. Because if this gentleman, Stephen, would have, would have done these tests a month ago, he would have seen that he was high risk. If he would have taken these inflammation markers, if he would have taken the NMR test, he would have seen that he was high risk, and he could have probably prevented that from happening. And it's unfortunate that this is happening to so many people and it's happened to my father. I saw it before my eyes. So it gave, it, had, it gave me a huge reality check because I saw my father suffer. I saw his health be taken away from him. And I had to go through that so my purpose could be revealed to me. And that's what I do. That's why I'm here with you today. I, I, I'm doing this because Elio is my friend and he shared that with me. I get paid $500 an hour to speak in front of people. I didn't, did I ask you to pay me? I do this because this information is the information that's gonna help you live to 120 years old and your family and your community. And I am inspired to share this information every single day on a massive level. So I, I just wanna let you know that don't take this lightly. Do some research about it. A couple of resources for you to take with you. Uh, my YouTube channel is a great resource. If you go to YouTube and type in Keto Camp, uh, on the back you should see like Keto Camp with the K, camp with the K. I have a whole bunch of free videos on there. Free content, every week I drop two videos and I curate research for you so you can take action with your health, share it with your family. That's gonna be a good resource for you. The Keto Kickstart Guide has a meal plan in there, it's free. That's gonna be a good resource for you. And then I do my online coaching program, which is what I did with him, which is called the Keto Camp Inner Circle. So do the free resources first. If you wanna take it to another level, if you want coaching from me, then you could join my online program, which is the Keto Camp Inner Circle. But I just gave you a whole bunch of tools and I probably just, <laughs> whenever I talk to people, I, I always like picture like a fire hose being sprayed at people because I have so much information and I know a lot of it is, um, it's a lot of information, right? So I just want to make sure there's at least one or two things you took away from this that you could implement in your life so you can start getting better results. Maybe you could share it with your family members and share it with the community so they can start doing some research. So did I answer some questions for you? Did I clear some things up for you? Yeah. I, would, I would love to know what was, what was the biggest takeaway um, that I shared with you today? What was the biggest thing? Well, for me, it, um, it has to do with different type of oil. I have different type of oil I use at home. I have the vegetable oil, I have the olive oil, I have coconut oil, but then I really don't know the difference between them. But now with what you have said, I have to go and research more into each one of them, you know the better ones, but you know the ones to avoid. Yeah, so it's so important, those oils. All those ones you mentioned are fine, as long as it's not the vegetable oil. So the coconut oil is fine, avocado, olive oil is fine, grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, all that's fine. Uh, it's the vegetable oils you want to avoid. So all that you just named, perfect. Yeah, keep, keep doing that. Now with olive oil, you want to be aware with olive oil, because olive oil, a lot of 80% of it, it's, it's trash, it's, it's mixed with canola, canola oil. So you want to make sure it's 100% yeah, extra virgin olive oil. 
Yeah, there's a brand that I that the only brand that I trust in Publix and Whole Foods is a brand called Lucini, Lucini, L U C I N I. Here's how you know if it's a good olive oil or not. If you if you put it in a spoon and you consume it and it burns your tongue and burns your throat, it's a good olive oil because that's the polyphenols, which is antioxidant, so it's really good for you. If it goes down smooth, it's a rancid olive oil. Mm. So that's that's your test right there. So when you go home, Try your olive oil. Yeah. I didn't waste anything. Yeah. If it's smooth, <laughs> you already have. Good morning. If it's smooth, you're like, oh shit. What's another good? One? Toss it. For what? Uh, co uh, coconut oil. Coconut oil is good. Uh -huh. So avocado oil is, is is one of the best cooking oils as well. And avocado oil you can find everywhere. Now here's the thing with vegetable oil. It's everywhere. If you get if you go home, I promise you, and you look at your ketchup, you look at your mayonnaise, you look at your salad dressings, there's gonna be all there's gonna be vegetable oil in there. Yeah, so there's a good brand called Primal Kitchen. Primal Kitchen, amazing. They have they have uh, mayonnaise, they have uh, salad dressings, they have a whole bunch of products. No vegetable oils, only avocado oil that they use. And they have it at Publix. They have it at Whole Foods. So make that switch to Primal Kitchen. They also use ketchup without any added sugar, without any high fructose corn syrup. And I didn't really touch upon, I didn't really touch upon sugar. Although sugar is also bad news, we know that. I mean, that's that's pretty that's pretty clear. But I'll tell you this. Get rid of sugar. What? So get rid of sugar. Get rid of sugar. At least the added sugar from fruit, natural yeah, fruit. Yeah, okay, natural once in a while. Yeah, but yeah. If I had the choice between eating sugar all day or consuming vegetable oils, I would consume sugar all day. By the way, not to say sugar is good, but just to paint the picture with vegetable oils, it, it causes heart attacks, it causes inflammation, it causes cancer. It's so ubiquitous it's everywhere and it's so deadly to us Publix has buy one get one free people are buying it because it's so cheap right All, most restaurants cook with it and I just want to paint the picture with you and show you how dangerous it is because I always say this at my lectures if I had the choice between smoking a cigarette every day or eating cooked vegetable oils every day I would smoke a cigarette every day that's how deadly they are to us so you want to make sure canola cottonseed oil, corn oil, soybean oil, which is probably the most common one, and safflower oil, those are the top five you want to avoid as much as possible. You know, it's going to be probably really hard to avoid it all together because when you go to restaurants, you're going to get it. But if you could control your household and control it as much as possible, you're going to be doing your, your future body huge service with that. Uh, and then sugar, sugar is not good as well. We know that. But some things you can do, little hacks I could give you, if you're about to have a, a meal that has sugar or a lot of carbohydrates, completing 40 to 50 squats before that meal helps with that meal. It helps control the blood sugar because it, it activates a pathway called the GLUT4 pathway. So it takes some of that blood sugar from the carbohydrates or the sugar and it puts it into your muscle cells and your liver, liver cells and less into your fat cells. So if you're ever gonna have like a Thanksgiving feast or maybe an Easter, an Easter <laughs> feast tonight, yeah. Yeah. yeah, just have everybody at the dinner table. I've done it before. I've actually just did it this past Thanksgiving. I had everybody at the dinner table do 50 squats together. Have you done it yet? Squats, yeah. 50, squats. 40 to 50 squats. And also when you're done with the meal, going for a 20 minute walk helps regulate blood sugar as well. So if you know somebody who's diabetic, type diabetic, this is gonna be, great, be a great hack for them. If they ever have a huge meal, it's gonna be really helpful for them to go on a walk right afterwards or even do some squats beforehand if they're okay with that. Yeah. So if you're doing the intermittent fasting, yeah. would you do that too? If, if you're doing intermittent fasting, would you do what? So each time before, because you're having a big meal, yeah. right? If you're, let's say you're eating twice a day. Yeah. You had a big meal. So before that meal, would you work out a little bit? Or? Totally. Yeah, you'd be more insulin sensitive. Yeah, so when you, you want that. Because if, if your hormones are more sensitive, especially insulin, uh, it's gonna make it's gonna do damage control. So totally you work out before a meal even better for you More squats. It doesn't have to be a full workout, but you do a workout If you start doing keto, you will be non hungry Whatsoever. Yeah hunger will disappear. Really? You know why so weird. You, you know why though because It is weird because it's like magic. It's like oh my god I'm not I'm not craving these foods anymore anymore The reason is because you taught your body to burn fat for fuel and we are storing all this body fat so we could burn it before you had all that body fat LDL, but you couldn't access it because you were a sugar burner. So if you went three or four hours without a glucose spike, your brain will send you an intense craving to get carbohydrates to get that glucose because you've taught your body to burn glucose. Now you taught your body to burn ketones. So as soon as your body's done burning sugar, it has the metabolic flexibility to start burning your body fat for fuel and producing ketones. 
your liver starts producing ketones. So when you do that, your body is technically not eating food, but you are eating your body fat. So you technically are eating, just not putting food in your mouth. You're eating your body fat, which is what we want. We were designed to do that. Yeah. So my second question is with regards to the meat, the vitamin. So how do you get to know which meat is best? I mean, when you go to the market, to the supermarket, how do you know? Yeah, you wanna you wanna look for 100% grass-fed beef. So look for when any product that says 100% grass-fed beef. It's important for it not to just say grass-fed, but also have the 100%. The reason is because if it just says grass-fed, it could mean that that cow was put on grass for a short period of time and then back into the cages, right? And they finished it with grain. So if it says 100% grass-fed, Publix has it, Whole Foods has it, a lot of these farmer markets have it, you're good to go. And then when it comes to chicken, look for organic, uh, free-range, pastured eggs. Uh, when it comes to eggs, the best product that I found at like Publix or Whole Foods is a, a company called Vital Choices or Vital Farms, Vital something. They have the best eggs. The orange, the more orange the yolk is, the healthier that chicken was. It was fed a natural diet. If you have a chicken typically that has a very yellow yolk, it's probably not a healthy chicken. It was not a healthy chicken. So that's how you know. Uh, there's companies like butcherbox.com that deliver protein to you, to your door, and then also uswellnessmeats.com that you can order meats. But Whole Foods and Publix has grass fed as well. Yeah, so you want to get organic. And when it comes to fish, you want to get wild caught fish over farmed fish. Uh, that's always important as well. Always wild caught over farmed as well. Any other questions for me? What time is it? 5.32. Okay, we're going to have a little bit more time. So you were sharing with me your biggest takeaway was the oils. Uh -huh. What was your biggest takeaway? Um, I know you mentioned something about protein in the cells already. You said something about protein in there. Yeah, so the cells, has every we're made up of, of trillions of cells, the human body is. So every cell has something called a cell membrane. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like the bodyguard of the cell. The cell membrane is made up of protein, saturated fat, and cholesterol. Now, yeah, that's what I, I think um, a lot of other people could probably take away, like you said, a different angle because we've been kind of pushed with this protein, protein, protein diet, take protein, but we naturally already have protein within us. Yeah. So with the, you know, you need protein and meats, you know how they stress when you go to a restaurant, you need protein, protein, all this stuff. I mean, you already develop protein automatically, naturally. So that's something you know, I, I think you probably can consider, you know, more research on because that's, that's huge right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah so protein. Protein's, protein's important, but it's some people are overdoing it for sure. And it really depends on if somebody's older. If you're like over the age of 65, you want more protein. If you're a little bit younger, you don't want as much protein. So you gotta kind of find out what's best for you and do your own research. But yeah, you're right because there is a, a huge push for it. Like for training, for instance, what's the first thing that a nice do too? As soon as you're done working out, you gotta have a protein shake because you're gonna yeah, lose that's, all. Yeah. That's what they say. That's yeah. what they say exactly. And and you know if your goal is to become a bodybuilder, then yes. If your goal is to put on as much size as possible, then yes, you gotta do that. That'll that'll be helpful. But if your goal is health, over that, then you it's actually more beneficial to fast after your workout if you are fat adapted because the body starts to raise something called human growth hormone, which is HGH, which is not just preserving muscle, but it's a fat burner and it's anti-aging. So when you are doing keto and you're fat adapted and then you start fasting, which that should be the, the way to do it, you get keto adapted first and then you fast, because if you just fast before that, you're gonna, you're gonna feel like crap. And then you work out and then you continue fasting, you actually put on more size that way, because when you break your fast, you get a huge surge of human growth hormone and you build new protein, healthier protein. So it sounds counterintuitive, but it's really, really beneficial. Uh, and you gotta experience, I actually experienced that I didn't used to like do too much after I woke up, but I would, I would gain weight, you know, because my HGH was highly exactly. active than people trying to eat, you know, a football player, people eat, eat. They couldn't gain no weight doing like a, a football camp, you know, two, two a days and stuff. Now I gain weight, you know, put on salad and fruit, and still, you know, stay strong. How did you feel during your, work? you worked out in a fasted state? How did you feel uh, in a fasted state versus a, a workout having eaten before? Yeah, like feel like what mentally, physically. Yeah, I mean, did you feel better when you were working out fasted versus having? Oh yeah, yeah, I felt. You felt better, better, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. me too. I, feel better, yeah. Yeah. I do too. So I, I train in a fasted state most of the time, probably like ninety nine percent of the time. I feel so much better because my body is not using my energy to, to process food. Yeah. It's using energy to crush my weights to crush a workout. You gotta, you gotta consider this, guys. It takes massive amounts of energy 
and resources and blood flow to digest food. Yeah. So when you're eating food, your body already has all that energy, but it's going to divert it towards digestion. Now let's say you don't eat the food, you're fasting, you still have all that energy, but it's going to be used to crush whatever you're doing. It could be a soccer game, it could be a, a lecture like I'm doing right now, it could be a, a sales call, whatever is important to you, your body has all that energy and it's going to divert it towards the task at hand. So. One of the worst things, and I just made a video about this, one of the worst things you can do for your health is to eat right before bed. You wanna give yourself at least three hours of digestion before bed. Two reasons why. Because if you eat right before bed, I just mentioned it takes a lot of resources to, to process food, right, to digest food. So instead of using all those resources to help you recover and repair yourself as you're asleep, you're gonna use it for digestion. So it slows down fat burning, it slows down muscle growth, and it just slows down your, your health. Number two, you never wanna give your body energy in the form of calories and then not use that energy because it creates a lot of something called reactive oxygen species, which is like free radicals. It creates a lot of inflammation when you eat and go to sleep because you're not using that energy. So one of the worst things you can do is eat and go to bed. If you can, if you one way or another convert that energy to something in your body and just study there, because energy is neither gain nor lost. So when you eat, and you don't use that energy for something else to find a way to store it, like you have said. Exactly. Instead of storing it as fat. Exactly, yeah. So you're not burning it off, right? You're just storing it as fat. So you're not getting good sleep, and, and, and that's twofold, because not only is it being stored as fat, but when you are, I mentioned at the beginning here, that many times sleep window, you're not gonna be able to activate all those fat burning hormones, because your body's gonna be, you're not gonna get that good deep sleep, because your body's using it to digest and store the fat. So give yourself at least three hours, yeah. So eat three hours before. Oh, eat. Right, right. I have to think. If I go to bed with an empty stomach, yeah, you'll be hungry. Yeah, you'll be hungry. I have to eat. Hungry or wake them up. up. Yeah, okay. it's the hunger, wake them up. I have a thing. similar thing. Yeah. I just get, it's like an anxiety thing, right? You're, you're anxious. You feel more comfortable sometimes when you have something in your stomach, you know? And since if you have a hard time sleeping, you know, it's like you can't go to bed when you're anxious. Then, you know, it's kind of just yeah, once you become keto adapted, you won't have that issue. So you would want to have a big dinner. You want to eat until full. I always say eat when you're eating, you're feasting. You're having a big dinner, you're eating a lot of protein and fat. Three hours prior at least, that should hold you over. So if you're keto adapted and you're eating until full, that should hold you over. So you're not getting hungry. But the, the problem is that your brain right now is used to getting glucose for fuel. So you want to make the conversion and get fat adapted, and then you're not going to have that issue. You're not gonna have to want to eat. You're actually gonna feel good, like Elio was talking about. The, the the cravings just just go away. So once you become keto adapted, your body's gonna start burning your body fat for fuel, and you don't have to worry about that. I I eat like once. I can't go more than an hour without eating. Yeah. Like, and if I do, my stomach starts hurting. I start really really like concentrating. Yeah. Now that works in a certain way, but it's not ideal. It's not ideal. No, it's it's you're you're a sugar, you're a sugar burner. I used to be one too. So you taught your body to burn glucose for fuel, sugar. So you want to teach it to burn fat for fuel. You want to teach it to have both, but metabolic flexibility. So it's it's it might be helpful with like performance and and if you're eating constantly and it can help you put on size, but it's not conducive to to long term health. It's not conducive to uh, longevity. But you know I, I was there too. It's just it could take you three weeks to get back into to burning fat. That's how long it takes, but on average, to get keto adapted, three weeks. Yeah, An average person, three weeks. So you can do that in three weeks. And once you do that, I'm telling you, the ketones are anti-inflammatory. Ketones are gonna help prevent a lot of bad things that people are dealing with nowadays. One out of three people, the stats, one out of three people throughout their lifetime get a form of cancer, okay? That's turning, in 10 years, it's gonna be one out of two people. Like, that's a serious stat right there. Have, have any of you met somebody but, or does any of you know somebody, a friend, a family member, or a friend of a friend who has ever have can had cancer? Raise your hand. It's a lot of people, okay? And we ha we're having kids get cancer. Early, yeah. Early on, I mean. 14, 16 years old. Now. Yeah, for even babies. Babies. Yeah. It's, it's ridiculous. So we want to make sure we're doing every everything we can for ourselves and our family and our community. That's the goal. So the main takeaways before I wrap up here and let you go on and get your soccer on is, I'm gonna just recap it because I know we had some 
uh, three of you join. Hello guys, I'm Ben, nice to meet you. The, the main takeaways that I talked about, and I'll give you a little bit of a summary here. Cholesterol is much, much more complex than total cholesterol and total LDL, okay? You wanna look at the particles, the size of the particles, and the number of particles. So you wanna request an NMR test from your doctor and look at other inflammatory markers. Number two, vegetable oils are the root cause of many, many, many diseases, including heart attacks, including disease. So you wanna stay away from vegetable oils as much as possible, and instead have avocado oil, olive oil, coconut oil, grass-fed ghee, and grass-fed butter. Uh, number three, sugar is bad, but not as bad as vegetable oil. And if you do 40 to 50 squats before a big meal, it'll help you out. Uh, number four, don't eat three hours before bed. Number five, Go to bed early, so if you get to bed by 10 p.m., you get you get that money time sleep window, thank you. So 10 to 2 a.m. is a great time to be asleep because you get really restorative properties around that time, fat burning hormones, human growth hormone. Uh, what else do we talk about? Getting keto adapted is important. Teach your cells to burn fat for fuel, but not staying in ketosis. We don't want to stay in there. We want to get keto adapted and go in and out. And then eventually, after you do keto, start doing some intermittent fasting, and intermittent fasting is not about eating less it's about eating less often so your body could heal itself and activate that autophagy process whenever I say autophagy whenever you hear it in the future think of that refrigerator that analogy I gave you cleaning out the groceries taking out the trash so that is the the talk I promise you if you take action on any of this you're gonna improve your health and you're gonna live a long healthy life the way we were designed to be so I want to say thank you for your time and your energy guys I really appreciate it thank you so much thank you yeah. thank you, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.